Yes. What is Forex? The foreign exchange market is a global decentralized or over-the-counter market for the trading of currencies. This market determines foreign exchange rates for every currency. It includes all aspects of buying, selling, and exchange currencies at current or determined price. Can you make a living trading in the forex market? Hmm. Yes. Simply yes. And the way you can make that there is by certain base rules and strategies you have to follow that will take you to that level. Okay? get to that level there's certain things you would have to change about yourself definitely have to change about yourself so to get to that level number one you have to be focused so you have to be focused with your goals so number one you have to have you know what I'm saying? And number two, you have to have attitude. Attitude. You have to have the most positive attitude, the positive outlook on life, on yourself, on the market, on everything you do. In every aspect, you have to be positive. So your attitude have to be there, you know? And number three, time management. So you have to know how to manage your time. You have to know how to be patient. You have to know when to execute. You have to know when to wait, when to stop, when to go. So you have to manage your time. You know, you gotta get up, you gotta set a schedule. These are things you have to execute first. You do that. Do all the hard things first. So come at the end of the day, there's that easy task to do to make the end of the day easier. You know? So manage your time very well, you know? Number four. Number four is... have to be focused you have to have a good attitude you have to manage your time you have to develop yourself you have to work on yourself you got to know at the end of the day it's about you you can't be too selfish yeah but you have to be selfish for yourself you know because it's you you're working on so you don't have to know what to tell friends no you have to know what to tell partner no you have to know what to tell hang no no you have to know what to be focused you have to know what Look, I gotta develop on me, I gotta work on me. Like, you know, so you have to develop yourself, you know? And then, number five. Number five is. Consistency. You have to be very consistent. The consistency level have to be at an all time high. You have to be really, really, really confident with your consistent. So every day you gotta be at it. You gotta be tight. You can't be lacking. You can't be like, I gotta do it today. But in life, you know, you gotta add it. You gotta be at it like an addict, you know? You gotta be at it, you know? So you have to be like, 
is that we get a little consensus on speed that will bring you to number two, which is confidence. Being cocky is just confident. You know what I mean? It's confident that it's all gonna work out. Everything going to take its place. Everything going to do its do. So you're very confident. And that confidence going to bring you to number seven, which is excuse me, sorry about that. Discipline. So you're gonna have to be disciplined. Very strict on yourself. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to be real hard on yourself to be disciplined. Because being disciplined ain't very easy. I mean everybody can be disciplined. But you as a person you're gonna have to be very, very disciplined with yourself and you're gonna have to stick to yourself. Cause all of this overall gonna bring you to the key thing. Is number eight value. You have to add value in anything you do, do it with the most value. Even if it's just telling somebody hi, put value in that way, put value in the way you project your voice to say hi, you know. Just bring value to the table. Anything that comes with value, people taking it, they grasping it, they holding it, they going with it, they buying it. People always buy into value. Always remember that. Okay? And remember these key steps. Give you a time to look at it. You take it down, jack it down. So another question has been asked um, how much can you make in a day trading? So you can make anywhere from a dollar to $20,000 or even more in one day, okay? So you can make money like the lottery, for real, for real. But you have to know what you're doing, okay? So let me not just buy you into, oh, you can make crazy money, but you could also lose crazy money, you know? So it's not a gamble, but if you come in there with a gamble mind state and you gamble with the market, you're gonna get gamble result, if you understand, you know? So gamble, gamble is 50-50. So if you go with $100 and you gamble it, it's a 50-50 chance. If you gamble it to make another $100, it's a 50-50 chance you gamble and lose your 100, or you just make another 100 or you make a few bucks more. But if you use the right strategy, you use your discipline, you follow your rules and your goals, your consistency, and you're watching the charts and you're patterning everything out, you're going to get there to turning that 100 to 200, 300, to 20,000. You understand? And I don't know if you could turn $100, honestly, to 20,000 in one day. Not with, a, not with $100. But it all depends on how much money you're willing to risk. To make twenty thousand dollars in one day, or how much money you willing to risk to make more than twenty thousand dollars in one day, or just how much money you willing to risk to add an extra dollar to your money in a day. So now, let's dive a little more into forex now. So forex, we explain what forex is, give you a little idea. Of you can make a living off of it. Yes, you can. It gives you some rules to follow. A rule given big strategy always helps you win in the market. Um, what else I just gave you? Um, I gave you all a little outlook on how much you can make in a day. You know, so start not anywhere from a dollar to twenty thousand. I look at it like that. Depends on how much you're coming in with, right? So now let's dive into it. 
in the market, we treat you within candlesticks. I always remember that. We treat you within candlesticks. I always remember we use candlesticks. Okay? And a bowl. Okay, so we tree using candlesticks and a bull candle represents the market is buying and a bear means the market is selling. So a bull, think of a bull. When a bull coming at you, you're going up. So I always remember a bull up, a bear. Bear swing with his hands and he got claws, so a bear have to slap you. So bear always gonna attack you going down. So I always remember that bear going down bull you going up might be funny <laughs> but that's always remember that so bullish bullish up bearish down okay so always remember that sorry i meant to give you some time to um, look at the notes real quick to pause the screen Candlesticks. Candlesticks gonna look like this. This is a bull candle, it will be going upward. So this will be bull. Bullish. Candle. So this is the body here. Is it open? And here we close that. Why is that closed? See, yep, I might spell it right the first time, but I spell it wrong. Excuse me. Yeah, there's no wrong for me. And this will be the no. This will represent our no. At the lowest place the price reach. But here we open that. And this will represent our high. And this is the highest place the price reach. But here where the price stops at. So this will represent our bullish candle. So this candle will be buying up in the market. And it will be probably most likely the colors will be blue or green. The candles, most likely you see a blue or green. Them the most color candles you will see in a bullish candle. And for bearish candle, this is known as a high. 
like on a bowl candle we put on the L and this one will be going down okay so here will be our open and here will be our close that is different Okay, so the difference is you open down here and you close up top. You open up here, you close. This is the same thing, the body. You hide. You go. This will be also known as a wick. The candle kind of wick. So this here is our close and our open because the bullish candle now, the bearish candle, excuse me, is actually going down in the market. So it represents when the market is selling. So this represents a sell. And this represents a buy. Okay. So bullish candle is when the market buying up bearish candles when the market is selling down so if you ever notice a trend in the market and if you see the trend going up that means we have a bullish trend and if you see the trend going down that means we have a bearish trend okay so that's a little graph there of the um, candlesticks okay lot size so Lot size is basically how much you're willing to risk on a trade. So an example, your lot size will look like 0 0.01 that equals 10 cents per pip. So I'm going to put per pip. Sorry about that, but yeah. So this is what your lot size would look like. For example, so when you go in on a 0 0.01 lot size, every pip you're gonna get 10 cents. So for every 10 pip, they'll pay you back a dollar. So if you get 10 pips, you get a dollar. 20 pips, you know what I mean? So if you get 100 pips, you make $10, okay? But now if you go in, with a size 0 0.10 that's a dollar per pip so for every 10 pips you get ten dollars okay so every 10 pips that will be ten dollars for you so every that will be a dollar okay. that will be a hundred dollars okay so if you go on with a 1.00 that's ten dollars a pip so 10 20 so as you get 10 pips that's a hundred dollars so if there is a way you could make twenty thousand dollars okay let's say you come in risking ten dollars okay i mean on your pips you know what i'm saying ten dollars boom every ten pips is a hundred dollars okay let's say you get a hundred pips you do the math you know what i mean so every ten pips was a hundred dollars so you get a hundred pips that's a thousand dollars so let's say you just get 100 pips on one trade and you get 500 pips on another trade, this still is your same lot size. You know what I'm saying? So you can do it. You can actually do it. You know what I mean? Like in some days you get crazy pips. Some days you get light pips. Some days you get heavy pips. You know what I mean? It's just how the market swings. 
So this is a key to show you how to enter far as like what you your risk is basically that's why I have risk management right under there. So risk management is you only want to risk 10% of your balance. Okay? So if you have a hundred dollars, you only want to risk ten dollars. Okay? So if you have a hundred dollars, you would want to come in with this lot size, the zero point zero one. Okay? And you could come in with that lot size, that's 10 cents, okay? So this equal in 10 cents. You know, you could come in with this here 10 times, but you wouldn't want to enter a trade 10 times, okay? So you could either come in with this 10 times, times 10, or you could come in with this on one trade, 0 0.10 on one trade. And this, this here will be your whole 10% on one trade. So if you get one pip down, that's $10. And you'll be already opt out. You'll be negative 10 if you go one pip down. Negative $10 go down one p one pip so that's why you you would not like for the x you would not want to risk your whole 10 percent on one trade so it's preferably you come in with this if you have a hundred dollars in your account yeah it's 10 cents but the market volatility is so crazy sometimes you see that 10 cent flash from just cents to dollars to 20s 30s 50s and seconds you know what i'm saying you wouldn't want it to be in a negative direction okay so risk management you would want to come in with a 0 0.01 for every hundred dollar account you could come in 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.0 0 0.05 you can go all the way up to 10 but is how definite you is on the trade that is gonna go straight into your zone and bring you profit one time so for the thousand dollars you would wanna 0 0.10 because this now gonna bring you a dollar a pip you know what I'm saying and like same thing here, you wouldn't want to risk it all. You multiply this by 10, that's a hundred dollars. That's your 10% one time. So you wouldn't want to risk it all doing 1.00. Because like I say, it would be negative 100 if the market goes down one pip. Just one pip automatically negative 100 if you put the whole balance so then again this will be an X again put a line between this so this is a no no this is a no no this is a yes so proper risk management so these is the key level amount the balance you would want to have these is a balance you want to have and this is how much you would want to risk so now with a thousand dollar account, you can come in with that amount. Okay. Now for every 10 pips is a hundred. Okay. So this is equal to one ten dollar but times ten is one hundred. So you have to multiply it by ten to risk your whole 10% versus coming in with your the whole 10% one time because moving at this rate this is equal to 100 per pip
every 10 fits. Yeah. So every 10 fits would be a thousand dollars. Because it's a hundred dollars per fit. Okay? And you don't want to risk this. Negative one. Your ten thousand dollar account. You don't want to be down on one move. You don't want to be out of your ten percent. Cause in two moves, you're out twenty percent. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to be losing so heavy. So I say within that ten percent, you risk. The highest amount I would tell you you could risk within the ten percent is five percent. So always remember, within the 10%, you want to risk half of that. So if you do lose, you still have half of your 10% within risk. You could always make back that half and then make profit. All right, that's all. So I'll let you guys look at the setup. give y'all some key terms because you need to know key terms and you need to know the news news is a key factor in market prediction let me write that down so you guys can put that in your notes news and is a key factor TRC, probably spell it wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comment on prediction. Um, but news is a key factor in the market with price prediction. Okay, key terms to look for in the news. You you want to look for like terms like hawkish and dovish in the news. Them is the key terms they would want to use, you know? In the news, they will really use that. And then in other news, you will hear bullish, bearish, you know what I mean? Buying, selling. So them is the key terms you have to look out for because, like in the market, you have to learn the market lingo to know, like, what, you know what I mean? What they're talking about. Because you might turn on the news and don't understand what they're talking about, so you don't know how to use the news to trade the market. You understand? So you have to, I'm just gonna give y'all six key terms real quick, but there's more key terms, but just a little quick, quick little six key terms. The market's right now. So we're gonna start with the buying side, you know? If you know bullish by now, Hawkish is another term. You should know buying by now. So all of these is in the same category as buying. This is market moving in the up direction. So this is when the market is moving in the downward position. Got to bring out another marker. So yes, these key terms. So anytime you see stuff like hawkish, buying, bullish, that means the market is going up. You know what I mean? Hawkish more um, relates to 
interest rates getting higher, they tighten up on the um in, I can't even bring the word to my mouth right now. It's at the tip of my tongue. Um inflation. Inflation rate getting higher and stuff like that. That all them stuff revolve around buying the pressure going up, the price of goods going up, the cost of living going up. And Dovish. Dovish is when it's like, okay, everything up, but now we see everything is too high. People can't afford it. We start releasing stuff. It's prices dropping. Everything going down. Everybody starting to sell. So more on a selling side, it would be more of bearish time. We just need more downtrend than up. Perfect example. Yesterday in the keynotes, I realized I was trading NASDAQ and it was speaking on Dovish terms. And I see the word Dovish right in the mix of everything. And when I checked the chart, NASDAQ was selling. I don't know if this phone has any, okay. We got about 15% and we are on the NASDAQ chart right now. And oh, you can see clearly, yes, the NASDAQ is actually selling. And this was for the news yesterday. I seen all this and NASDAQ actually plummeted. As you can see, we came down, 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 up a little bit, down, up, up, down, 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 down. So that was in the result of Dovish News yesterday. Prime example. I don't have the key article. The key article is actually on the recording device. So, yes, the news actually plays a key factor in price prediction. So... Be mindful of the news when you're trading, you tune into the news, you see what they're talking about. So anything relevant to the news around currencies, okay? Global currencies, anything has to do with money in the news, you want to tune in, especially if that's what you're trading. If you're trading um, currency pairs, you want to chime into the news on the currency. If you're trading indices, you want to chime into the stock market and stuff and see what's going on there. If you're trading cryptocurrencies, you want to trade it chime into the cryptocurrency space to see what's going on with which cryptocurrency you're trading so you have a good outlook on predicting your price and your strategies and your conditions and everything is met and you can go ahead and make your entry and start trading. So in the market, there are different types of markets and in the market, we trade forex crossing. Oh, crypto. Metals. and indices so forex and forex crosses we trade all pairs and cryptos we trade bitcoin So these are markets we trade in Forex, okay? We got some more cryptos that's actually out for trading. I just seen today's shape, you know? 
Um, so yeah, I think this week too, my in my chat they've been trading um Ethereum. I haven't traded. Only trade Bitcoin. I made six thousand on Bitcoin in two weeks. Bitcoin is a good one. Um, gold, silver, germ, S and P, Nas, US thirty. So the indices, these are the big boys. These were the big money play at. Um, gold been moving good lately. Actually floating up in the eighteen thousands now. Um, Bitcoin going crazy this week, sixty-eight thousand. Um, all pairs forex crosses is like the foreign exchange. So that's like USD, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, New Zealand, all them places. That's where you can find all them pairs in the forex crosses. So this is who we trade with. These are the markets we um trade with here in the market. Yeah. We're just showing y'all the different markets. So now we're gonna talk a little more about um SL. You gonna see stuff like S L P T. So SL is for stop. Loss. Self-explanatory. P T to take profit. Take profit. So, if you're in a trade, let's say this is your trade, and this is your entry right here. Your entry. This is your stop loss. This is your TT loss. This is your TT. And this is the market momentum. So you enter the market here. This is your stop loss. And the market continues to go down the street. Then it comes back up. Hit your stop loss before it hits your TP when you didn't come out. That means you exit the trade because it's stop loss is going to stop your lossing. So it's going to stop you from losing actually. Not stop your lossing, but stop your losing. So it's going to stop you out before you, the price continues to go higher and you continue to lose more. So you'll be stopped out right here when it's stop loss. So if price did not do that and actually go down to your TP line and continue to go down right here you'll be stopped out the trade and you will take all this profit all this will be your profit right here that area right there will be your profit even though the market continuing to profit you hit your zone, you take profit zone, so you out of the trade. So your money is secure and safe in your balance. So you don't have to worry about the trade no more. So stop loss and take profit is actually perimeters to save your balance from losing too much. Stop loss is actually save you from losing too much. And take profit takes you out with just the right amount of profit you needed in that trade, okay? So you was, when you end, whenever you enter a trade, you want to set stop losses and take profit. And always ask yourself before you enter any trade, is this trade worth trading? Am I willing to lose the amount I would lose if I happen to lose this trade? And if the answer is yes, take that trade. It's a very good trade. Win or loss. Always remember that. But if the answer is no, if you ain't too sure, don't take that trade. You gotta be willing to lose to win. Cause sometimes the market could set up in a perfect condition and still backfires. Cause we don't control the market. I always remember that we do not control the market. Even if everything set up, everything aligned perfect and price action is about to move in your direction and then flip, it can happen. It can happen. So stop loss and take profit on every trade you wanna enter the trade modify your stops and you take profit always use a proper risk risk to reward 
always use proper wrist to your rod um ratios you want to always have a two to one one to one is the best you, two to one three to one three to two so you just map out when you get in the chops and stuff you're going to see how to use your ratio and stuff and learn different strategies to tell the momentum and the movement of the market with the pips so you would know if it do fall back how much pips it went into drop versus how much pips it went into go up okay so we're gonna go ahead and erase this so erase this a little bit i can understand more so yeah stop loss sl for stop loss and your stop loss is always gonna save you from losing more than you want to can you move your stop loss yes so let's say okay this is the chart this is your entry you're going in for a sell this is your take profit This is TP. This is AOY. This is stop loss. So this is your entry. Market going down like you projected. You look back at the trade, you realize at this point here. You are hundred dollars in profit. You can move your stop loss from here to here. So if the market bounces back, you stopped out in profit. You might even make the goal that you wanted in TP, but if the market bounces back, your stop loss is now here. So if the market bounces back, your entry was here, but your stop loss here. So you in profit, you be stopped out in profit. So you would lose out on making, let's say $100, but make $30 or $25 in profit versus it coming back and hitting your stop loss and your negative $10. Okay, so you can also move your stop loss. So let's say you move your stop loss here and the market did not bounce back as you can see. It continue a downtrend. It continue a downtrend towards your TP. So you decide to move your TP. You move your TP further down. You can move your TP further down before the price reach further down. So you move your TP further down because the market is going down. You know there's a pullback, but you're still in the trade. So when the pullback, it start to go down. You now move your stop loss again from up here to here. So now you have your stop loss here. And you in here now at, let's say your TP was $100, you're here at $80. So now you move your stop loss to $80. So if the market happens to swing back here, you're still in profit $80. So you will get stopped out, but you stopped out at $80. So you're still stopping out in profit, okay? So you, you, you're not losing. If you follow the trend, you could sit on the trade and follow the trend and ride out the trend and move your stops and targets along the way and eat money along the way and if the market ever decides to fall back on you you fall out in profit how does that sound so stop loss and take profit is key is a very key in the market is very important if you're going to enter a trade and do not have no stops or take profit in place 
then you are actually willing to let the market take all your money because that's what's going to happen if you have no entry in place you just enter the trade the market gonna do what it wants with your money it could go all the way up in profit and then take it all back it happened to me it happened to millions before the market does that so be careful of not putting in stop loss not putting in take profits you have to put them in and sometimes you just have to take your profit when it's up because the market could come close to your take profit and bounce back and go to the stop loss like I did in the first video, in the first um, drawing just now. Um, the market can actually test the zone and bounce back from the zone, okay? So sometimes you could be up in profit $50, $70 and you don't pull it thinking there's more and it goes all the way down to negatives. It can happen. Excuse me, sorry. So that a little pop. I'm gonna pause right quick. Okay, so these are pips. I'm gonna show you about pips now, okay? So, oh, my phone just died on me. I was gonna show you all some perfect example of pips, but my phone just died on me. I forgot to put it in charge. It said 13%, but that was no percent. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. So on the chart, the simple chart, this is what it's gonna look like. Straight numbers. This number is just gonna take just like all the rest. This is gonna look like straight numbers. And then when you switch over to advanced, the ending numbers is gonna be the big numbers. And then you got a small little twinkle number. The small little number, this number gonna be twitching fat. Like the last number in the seconds are always going all the way up to 10. <laughs> so now what this number is, it's called a pipette. Like the 10th tenth, tenth number, the 10th tenth of a second. Yeah, so this is a pipette of a pip. Okay, so every 10 pipettes is one pip. Okay, so every time this number goes up to 10, this number goes up. Or if it's seven, it goes down to zero number goes down from nine down to zero nine down to zero so now you're taking away your pips okay so every time the pipettes go down to zero backwards one pip is being reduced you know what i mean going up every time it goes up to zero every time it goes from zero to ten one pip is increased okay so if it was going in on a trade and this was our entry level right here this is the same number as this number right here this is our entry level so to count the pips these are our pips right here the 65 this is our pip so 65 will be pip number one because it's our entry level so we starting from so 1.20658 would be entry level so going up that's 30 pips up if we buy up and this is 40 pips down so if we're going in for a sell we if our TP is at 25 and this is 65 that means we're going in for a sell because we the numbers are going down so this is a sell, okay? Our stop loss is at 95, so the number is up. So that means we do not want the market to bite up to the stop loss. The stop loss is 30 pip. That's a 30 pip loss. And this is a 40 pip gain. Right? So depends on your lot size, like I showed you guys earlier. size that times your pips you will multiply that times 40 pips times 40 pips times 40 pips and you remember this is equal to 10 cents 
one dollar. Ten dollars. So ten dollars by forty. So like four hundred dollars for me. One dollar by forty. So like forty dollars for me. Ten cents by forty. So like four dollars. So you'll make four dollars. Forty dollars and four hundred dollars if the market sell down to where the TP is at. All depends on your entry, your balance, how much you have. So how much your balance is depends on your entry, how much you're willing to risk. We got some people they don't follow proper risk management and they go all in. Sometimes they make it, sometimes they break it. So that's a risk uh, based on you. But I can say with the proper risk management, you can be successful, especially when you learn how to count your pips. So these are the three levels that are 65. So we wanna get down to 25. So that let us know right here is where we count it. These numbers. So these don't mean nothing. They really don't, as far as counting pips. They are not important, because they, the numbers behind is what gonna move faster than the numbers in the front. So these gonna have to move in order for these to move. So you ain't gonna focus on these numbers here. You're gonna focus on these numbers here in the back. Because you know how to do math. You gotta come from the back to get to the front. That's the right. That's how we do it. It's the same thing apply here. So it's not no crazy equation where you gotta figure out how to do this, how to do that. You know what I mean? It's simple math, you know what I mean? It's addition and subtraction, okay? That's all we're using in the market as far as math, addition and subtraction and multiplication and multiplication, okay? Addition, subtraction and multiplication. And that's just to figure out how much you will make on the trade. You could enter the trade, know the 40 pips, know your lot, and know it by heart, because it's just simple multiplication. So, this is pips. You know, be right there. Stop losses and take profits. Entry level, EL, for entry level, our entry level, we said it was 1.30658. We want to go up between here 30 pips so 30 30 which is like 3 plus 9 3 plus 6 actually 30 plus 60 9 65 95 we already know that's 95 yeah 8 bring it up everything else stays the same because they don't matter this will be our stop loss we don't want the market to go there. So I take profits. We really want the market to go. We want, let's say we're looking for 40 pips. So we just subtract 40 down. 25. Hey. So take 40 pips. Profit. So that's what? 30 pips. And a negative. So once the market go up here, you already know it's 30 pips, okay? And you know how much you're gonna lose. So, back to here. We just change it for two or three. Change it for two or three. So is you willing to lose 300 to make 400? Willing to lose 30 to make 40? Willing to lose $3 to make $4? Okay? So it's on you. It's on your risk. I'm just giving you a simple example. This don't have to be your risk. Okay? It's just an example.
and fears. More wrecks for beginners. I hope this video is very educational. I hope viewers um, learn a lot from this video. I know I've been pitching on all type of different topics within the forex market but everything i teach here tonight and i explain here tonight it could take you a very long way and you just have to be patient you have to relax and patient the number one thing in forex is relax okay so with forex you have to relax if you miss a trade, there's always a next trade. The market, it closed on the weekends. It closed 5 o'clock every day. It was time change. It closes 4. So the market closes, yes. It closed 4 and reopened by 5. It closes from an hour on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It closes for 1 hour and then it closed Friday and reopened on Sunday. So the market is always there. You can always trade. So if you miss a trade, it's not the end of the world, you know. Don't jump in if it's too late. Don't force it. Patience, relax. Okay? Discipline is key in the market. If you're not disciplined, you're going to blow your account. You're going to lose it all. You're going to risk it all and lose it all. Okay? So, proper risk management, discipline, look for key levels of entry, learn structure, learn to read the charts. Like, I have more videos on all of them stuff, but this is just my first video. So, my first introduction to you into the forex world i don't want to get too much and i already compiled you with a lot of information already i know so i just hope this was education and i will continue my educational journey on teaching in the forex space and thank you all for viewing and thank all my viewers like subscribe and enjoy the channel